one thing that students told us over and over again was that they were interested in a first class athletic program and they were interested in fitness and recreation. We looked at a number of different facilities. We tried to pick out the pieces of those facilities that we felt were the best and incorporate them into this plan. This really does help the university from a recruiting standpoint for student athletes, for student life, uh, adding for events to the community. I have been to a lot of universities, but I haven't seen any universities uh, complex, sports complex, that could replicate what we have here on the campus of uh, Boston University. It's just a special place. The Harry Aganis Arena is part of a $225 million sports and recreation complex called the John Hancock Student Village. The planning for this facility started about five years ago, and the university spared no expense, as is evident. I, I think our hockey team and our basketball teams and the rest of our athletic department are really going really to take great pride in this facility and really going to see great dividends from the building itself. You have a very intimate facility for a facility that seats over 6,000. As a player, you're going to feel like the, you're, the fans are right on top of the action. And as a fan, you feel like you're right on top of the action as well. There are 29 suites. All of them have been sold out. One is the Bavis suite. That is strictly for former players. So whether you were Travis Roy and you played 11 seconds or you're Michael Rizzioni and captain the 1980 Olympic team, that box is for you. The other one, which I think is very unique, uh, is the Snapple Student Suite. It'll be for a student who has distinguished himself or herself in some part of the university community. As you can see, with the uh, we have the four-sided video scoreboard. We have the ribbon board that runs halfway around the building. So we've tried to an anticipate some of the things that people are going to want to see in the future. Well, this is more than just a locker room. It's a locker area. We never even had a lounge to sit in and have a you know cup of coffee sit on a couch we never had that at all at Walter Brown uh, these guys have flat screen TVs they have hot tubs they have the whole works when the architect sat down to design the area for the press he sat down and asked me what would I like and everything that I had asked for I got Jack Parker will have the capability of taking what happened in the first period dubbing it up on a tape and going in and, and replaying that to his team at the end of the first period very quickly. I don't know if there's too many facilities that, where you can do that. Well, they asked all, all alums, and I went, I'm an alum, obviously, if you want to give a gift, a naming gift, and I gave, I named the referee's room so that uh, when they walk in the room, they got to realize that it's dedicated to me for, for their use, so I hope they treat me well. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. On January 3rd, Aganis Arena opened its doors to the public, and as expected, everyone was impressed. bad seat in the place which is great and, you know the architects and Jack and everyone should be uh, thrilled with how it came out Score! this building really pays tribute to everything that this program has been about but Bale will win the opener at Agassiz Arena 